Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the session on the Kalam program where today we'll be discussing about important geophysical phenomena such as earthquake, tsunami, volcanic activity, cyclone, etc. So let us see some of the important questions. Discuss the factors responsible for the formation of tropical cyclone. Why the frequency of occurrence of cyclones in Bay of Bengal is more than in Arabian Sea? Now, when you look at this, they are again divided into two. The factors responsible for formation of tropical cyclones are very easy and comfortable because you need to just list out the factors responsible. What's the first factor that is required? Is moist and humid air is required? I hope you agree. And for this, solar radiation should penetrate at least, like, you know, 60 to 77 meter. Third, there should be presence of IT sees it. Fourth, you should have Coriolis force. Fifth, you should have, most importantly, some vertical movement of air and then anti-cyclonic circulation on top. So at least if you can mention these in detail, that should be more than enough. And then you need to talk about the frequency of occurrence of cyclones in Bay of Bengal. See, the very first important thing is it's not ITCZ, it's not see if it's not these which actually determine it's more about the moist and humid air where you require 23 to 27 degrees celsius to form these cyclones and when you look at this particular phenomena this is more in bay of bengal compared to arabian sea mainly because of two important reasons one the very first important reason is the warm ocean currents which are coming from South America comes towards Australia and then it continues into Indian Ocean as well. This I am talking about the southern hemisphere because you are aware about the El Nino and other things. The same thing occurs in northern hemisphere from North America. It comes towards Indonesia, Philippines and all. As several Southeast Asian islands are there, they come towards what we call as Bay of Bengal. So due to this, what is happening, the warm water from the Western Pacific is entering into Bay of Bengal, which is increasing the average like you know temperature of Bay of Bengal and the second most important fact that I want you people to know about the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea when I'm talking about these two aspects one after the other is that you will have typhoons present in China or typhoon near Japan which is a cyclone and it may have a landfall in Southeast Asian countries and the low pressure may continue till Bay of Bengal and the landfall low pressure that like you know high temperature low pressure thing is present cell is present and once it enters into Bay of Bengal it may again become another cyclone. So what is going to happen a cyclone after landfall which has died may again rejuvenate in Bay of Bengal as this frequency is more Bay of Bengal may have considerably more than double cyclones compared to Arabian Sea. Fine, this is extremely important for you. Then, distribution of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions across the world are concentrated more at the plate boundaries. Discuss. Now, for these type of questions, you need to talk first about, right, the Earthquakes which are associated with either release of energy through elasticity or breakdown of the rocks which are present or you need to talk about the volcanoes which are mainly associated with the magma flow 
coming through the joints and all which are present. Now, these two are important. And when it is associated with plate boundaries, you need to talk about the divergent plate boundary, where first you will have joints and along joints, there is high possibility of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions coming. And then you have the faults which leads to rift valleys and they are associated with volcanic eruptions and earthquakes because energy is released again. Linear sea around Red Sea also on land we have seen lot of volcanic mountains and most importantly you will have mid-oceanic ridges along the sea floor spreading which is associated with divergent boundary. And then you need to talk about the convergent boundaries as well. And when I talk about the convergent boundary, I want to talk about the subduction zone which is there. I need to talk about the magma raising and which comes. And near the subduction zone, there is a possibility of what we call as earthquakes. And the magma raising will actually give rise to volcanic mountains. So if you can talk about the divergent, convergent and especially in convergent, you will be talking about ocean, ocean and ocean continent convergence. If you can talk about that, it should be more than enough. And then you have explained various characteristics of seismic waves and discussed the concept of shadow zones. You need to talk about the seismic waves here. They're not talking about body waves specifically. So you need to divide seismic waves into two body waves and surface waves. You need to say you have P waves or primary waves which appear first. And then you have S waves or secondary waves which appear later. And then you have surface waves which can be divided into Rayleigh waves and love waves. So this is completely different. And when we are talking about the shadow zones and all, they are associated with P and S waves. But I need to talk about the characteristics of P, S and these surface waves as well. Primary waves are the first one which appears and they move longitudinally. Particle movement is parallel to the wave movement, right? All these points are important. They travel in both solids and liquids. Yes, waves is transverse waves and they are secondary and they travel only in solids and they are absent in the liquids. From the surface, you get Rayleigh waves which are elliptical and love waves which are zigzag and they die out soon but their impact is huge. This is what we talk about these two aspects. And then what is more important for us is about the shadow zone where I want you to have two diagrams. One is for P waves, another one is for S waves. And if this is the focus, then I hope you are aware till 105, till 105 on either side, you will observe the P waves coming and after 105, Due to the properties of the P waves, you will not observe them till 140 because there will be refraction. And when we talk about the S waves, they are present only till 105 on either side. So this clearly shows that at 105, you have outer core which is liquid and it is actually responsible for this shadow zone being present. And this has helped us in understanding what we normally call as right in understanding what we normally call as interior of the earth and here i want you to know the p waves if you want you can write the diagrams or you can leave and the s waves you will write like this and as i told you the particle movement will be perpendicular to wave movement here the particle movement will be along the wave movement in this particular direction Right. So these are important aspects that we need to. See. And then if you look at previous year questions, tropical cyclones are largely confined to South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico because of the warm water that is there. Again, cyclones, they asked you world's fold mountains. This we have already analyzed. Himalayas are highly prone to landslides. Discuss the causes and suggest 
mitigation measures associated with disaster management so guys mostly they are associated with the major events that occur like cyclones landslides and all as the term clearly indicates please don't try to read what is landslide alone but try to read where landslides are occurring and why they are occurring and what are the reasons and what measures should be done so that even disaster management would be easy for you so the next test would be on indian constitution which would be discussed by other faculty so guys please be prepared and make the best use of these so as i am repeating from last four lectures we have pcm batch students are asking us again and again when it is that's why we are telling so many times and we have the optional offline online everything starting even classes are available online even if you are unable to come to hyderabad or bangalore center please try to make the best use of the available resources